to go, guys. Brilliant. Uh, well, uh, Derek, fantastic to get back in the dugout and uh, hugely relieved, I would imagine, to get your first win as well. Yeah, I enjoyed the game. It was um, obviously great to get back in. Um, I thought the players um, imposed themselves in the game uh, really well. As an away team, we were very dominant in that opening period. Just disappointed we never scored more goals from our play. But um, you know, for the first for the first game out, first um, working with the players, you know, a two 0 victory away from home was always pleasing. So um, um, took a lot from the game. I think it's clear we can still improve in a lot of areas, but certainly the motivation of the team, the, the work ethic of the team, a lot of what we asked for was there. It sounded very much. I was only listening on the radio, so apologies, but. Uh... It sounded very much like many Kilmarnock games this season so far, and huge number of chances created, but just that conversion to make the game a bit more comfortable. Is that something that you'll be you'll be looking to address and looking to work on in the next few weeks? Yeah, I think you're always looking for the improvements. I think when you're dominating a game as we did, that you'd like, as you say, is to try and make take full advantage of that. But you know, ultimately, it's about winning the game, and we won the game. Um, I think uh, we. I've been really pleased and the, how receptive the players have been. So we're pleased from that sense. The players in the building have been um, good with us and we're enjoying working with them. But when you take over a new club and you're assessing the squad, particularly in the transfer window, I think it's you know you, it's got it makes a lot of sense to just to keep looking and see what else is there that can help us with the challenge ahead. And you know, like every manager, there's no any manager you speak to in January, they want to come out of the January window stronger than they went into it, and we're no different. And just going to the, the, the fans aspect, I know you've been very supportive. The club, I should say, has been supportive of uh, part of this and yourself. Is it very frustrating that it doesn't look like you will get the fan numbers in for this Friday's match that perhaps you should have? Yeah, it's disappointing. I think it's two very well supported clubs. The game's live on TV as well, but it would still be a significant crowd in. Um, I think when we got the news yesterday that you know we're allowed to have uh, full capacity from Monday, I think, first of all, that was really pleasing because it was a, obviously a step in the right direction and maybe seen as a wee bit of surprise at full capacity right away after the restrictions, but, you know, delighted that, that is the case. And when we're so close to that that date uh, and still being restricted to 500, then, of course, there's, it's a tinge of disappointment. We fully support Partick's um, plea, really, to try and get more supporters in, and we would want to be inclusive of that. We would like our supporters to be involved in that. Um, but if it's not... It's just one more weekend without supporters and, and obviously it's full steam ahead from next week. But if there is a way we can get some Kilmarnock fans in and having a bigger crowd in, then it always helps to the, the spectacle of the game and uh, the atmosphere, of course. You talked about looking perhaps uh, outside into the market. I suppose that's the beauty of, of you being able to come in during the window rather than having your hands tied. Uh, Lafferty is one that I see linked in the paper. Is he a realistic prospect to bring back? Great finisher, a huge track record at this level. Yeah, I mean, you're right what you say about Kyle, but I mean, for me, it's I'm not going to get drawn into any specifics of what certain players we're looking for. You know, I'm still assessing the squad. And, you know, sometimes when you have conversations with agents throughout, it doesn't mean to say that it's who you want. It's that time of the, um, the year. It's journalists' job to try and ask the questions. and um, But it's our job just to be... Um, um, pretty respectful of what we've got at the minute. We keep continuing to ask questions, have conversations, but you know, I think the amount of people we've been linked with since I've come in, you know, more than uh, less than half of them um, have only been one or two conversations, and there's been a lot more that we haven't even considered. So it's I'm not going to get drawn into specifics of any one particular player. I will ask another specific though, just uh, be able to be. Um, there's obviously uh, talent at Aberdeen that may or may not be available. I don't know. Is is that somewhere that you would you would look at as a loan availability for someone, for instance, like Dean Campbell to, to come if to If agents you? or clubs come on to me and say that certain players are available, then I would look in uh, whatever. You know, it doesn't mean to say that, you know, obviously you've got an idea maybe of where we might need strength, but until you, you continually work with the players and you know, injuries, you know, picked up an injury with Scott Robinson, so you know, sometimes injuries can dictate where um, you need to try and uh, improve and get and bolster, really. So I'm happy to look uh, in any point, really, to see if we can make the necessary improvements. So, um, you know, so it's, again, you know, these conversations are always ongoing with, with, with whoever. 
Uh, and in terms of Thistle this Friday, yeah, uh, another uh, bloody hard game. It's such a tight league. Um, but, the, you know, they've come in a bit of form after a bit of a sticky start. And uh, but I presume you'll be looking to carry on that, uh, on, on your ways. Yeah, I mean, I've seen Thistle a couple of times in the flesh this season. And, uh, you know, Ian's put together a really good squad. Um, you know, we've got a, a front two and other options really there that can score goals. A lot of players I know well. Um, and their motivation is clear as well. You know, they'll be one of the, the teams in the league who believe that they can go and win a title. And, and I think that's why the, the league is so competitive. You know, there's probably at the start of the season a few teams who are just happy to make sure they stay in the league. And that is, um, and that is uh, their kind of uh, quest for it and their motivation. But there's certainly a lot more uh, in this league who will have aspirations of getting to the Premier League. And Patrick Thistle are, are one of them, clearly. Um, you know, they've got a good squad, um, know their staff very well as well. So I know how motivated they'll be for this one and for the games between now and the end of the season. But we've got to let Partick Thistle feel us as well as a team. We've got to let them know that, you know, we're, we're a team that's going there to go and win the game. Um, but ultimately, we can talk about other teams and the competitors and all the rest of it. Um, um, we're coming up, we've got to try and look after our own business. And the good thing is, we, with 16 games to go, we can still control what happens to us. And, having improved performances, looking for those improvements as we go along and hopefully keep winning. Um, then we'll be there thereabouts if we can do our jobs well. Brilliant, Derek. Best of luck for Friday and great Thank to you. see you. Really pleased. Yes, Chris. Thank you. Hi there. Uh, I was just wondering if I could ask you, first and foremost, how big a motivation is it to go into Saturday top of the league if you can win this game on Friday before the other teams play? Yeah, it's not something I've really thought about, but I think it's I think any time where you can say that and, and achieve that, then it's good at any time of the season. But we're just really looking for um, the three points. Being top of the league in January isn't the most important thing. Being top of the league at the end of the season is what we're after. So um, there's a lot of good teams, a lot, as I said, and uh, a lot of teams who are capable of going strong runs. We've just got to try and demonstrate that from our own perspective and not really get too caught up in what else is happening. Nobody gives you a title. If you're going to win a promotion and win a championship, you're going to have to do your work yourself, and that's what we look at it. What's been your experience of coming up against Ian McCall in the past? Uh, pretty good, I think. Um, you know, obviously, I think my first full season um, at St Johnston, we were battling away with, with them, Dundee, I think it was, to... Um, for promotion, we managed to overcome that one. But Ian's a very experienced manager, and um, he always puts good teams on the pitch. You know, he's got a strong record um, at, at most of his clubs, in particular Partick Thistle, and uh, there's certainly a lot of encouragement there. So um, that isn't really about managers; it's about team performance, and I think we'll both see it that way tomorrow night, Friday night. How much of a similarity do you see between the current Kilmarnock team and the St Johnson team you brought up in 2009? Uh, well, it's a big bit different for us because obviously I'm just in here a week. I was I was a player manager at St Johnson when I first went in, so I've seen it from a player's perspective, a really kind of you know, a tight dressing room, and I think that's important when you try and win a title. You've got to have that togetherness and spirit as well as good players and having the answers to win games in a competitive league. I think for... You know, I think back, I felt a pressure on myself to deliver that, that promotion. We'd been out with the top flight for so long. Slightly different to Kilmarnock, where they've been a Premier League team for 28 years prior to this season. So um, there's probably more expected of Kilmarnock um, in terms of the situation about getting straight back up. Um, and, you know, obviously the, that's the intention from all of us here. So um, but in terms of winning a league and winning a promotion, a lot of things have to be right at your club and, you know, I feel as though we've got a good support staff here, the non-footballing side of the club, you know, certainly the board and, and others, you know, everybody's willing and and, um, and desperate for the club to go and do well and improve and, and everybody's been really supportive of myself and my and my week here. So, but obviously um, the players, the job in hand comes kick off is what's the most important thing and try to give the players the confidence that they can go and be as good as they can be week in, week out, show that consistency. Like I say, hopefully we can be there or thereabouts. Kilmarnock are unbeaten in three and they've won two of those games. So that means that over those three games, they're the informed team in the league. Right. Is it possible? Is it possible that Kilmarnock are coming into form at the right time of the season while other teams' form is dipped? 
No, I think um, based on what your analogy there, three games isn't any real um, indication of what's required. You know, we've got to try and do that over a more pro prolonged period. And I think uh, we're striving for that consistency of results. Um, we can get those improvements in performance and keep the motivation high and see the bigger picture of what we can achieve here, then um, hopefully we can be consistent enough to, to, um, to improve on those, that, that, that run. Um, but it's longer runs than that that will be required and hopefully we can give enough evidence that we're capable of that. And just finally for me, um, I know you mentioned to our newspaper friends um, the players that you've got missing this week. Can you just recap that for us? Uh, well, long-term, sorry, long-term Jason Naismith is out with uh, a knee injury. He'll look to be back in three weeks' time. Uh, Brad Lyons, some summer with his hamstring. I've got Jack Sanders uh, serving his second game suspension. Um, we have got Scott Robinson, who got injured at Queen's on Saturday. Um, he'll go for a scan for a wee bit further investigation. It's not really settled. The heel injury he's got and uh, the indication will be he'll, he'll be missing for a few weeks, which is naturally disappointing because he, he was very good in the game and he was somebody that I was really looking forward to working with. And other than that, one or two little knocks that are a wee bit of a concern that haven't been ruled out for the weekend. Um, we're pretty much the same as we were last week. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, no problem. We good? I'm good, yep. Cheers. Cheers.